you may have seen these staggering numbers. 30 to 40 percent of all the food that is produced in Canada is actually lost to landfill or to composting. And that's costing Canadians $31 billion. Do you think that you waste food in your own home? Sometimes, yeah. Um, we bought peaches probably a week ago that went bad with it, like went moldy within three days. You know, if a lot of food goes in the bin, it's it's not it's not crazy. Forty percent of our food's wasted, but we have people that are food insecure. A lot of times I keep Scott out of school when there's no food. My friend calls it food waste, the stupidest problem in the world. So how is this possible? Surely it's the grocery stores, restaurants, and fast food chains that are responsible for such large quantities of food being tossed. Could it be that we, as the consumer, have a whole lot more control over our food waste than we think? And where is all this food waste coming from? I'm about to explore all the sectors of our food chain to find out. Farms are where the big component of food waste occurs. It's overproduction. Uh, and a lot of it's food that just doesn't look pretty and therefore the, the belief is it doesn't sell and it just sits in the field and goes bad. At Eek Farms, Avia Eek struggles with the demand for perfect vegetables from commercial buyers. And that need for perfection has a greater impact on food waste than we think. From a farmer's perspective, we find food waste in our fields at harvest time. When you're, when you're harvesting, um, you, you, you are using your resources, but you only want to put the very best in the box. So when, when, we're, when we're harvesting carrots, um, you know, you've got somebody working on the back of the combine and they're looking for something that's obviously not your regular standard shaped carrot. And then their job is just to pitch it into the field. You know, sometimes you're, you're pretty good and it's maybe 80 or 90 percent that you're able to sell. And if you have a really bad year, like this year already, our farmers have experienced about 30, our farm has experienced 30 percent crop loss. Other farmers have experienced more. And Avia is not the only one dealing with this problem. At Greenacres Farm, Tony Gatano has already tossed quite a bit. Like for example, you can see the dwarf one there. This one will be thrown away. That one will meet standard. So why would this one be thrown away? Weight, weight. does not meet the weight standard. Right. Yeah. And so what do you what what do you do with this? It goes back into the ground. On a normal year, we'll probably lose uh, between five and 10%. This year, it's around uh, 20 to uh, some patches, 50%. Uh, per acre, we're probably losing about two to 3,000 an acre. Dollars. Dollars. And uh, you can figure it out at a 150 acre farm, that adds up to hundreds of thousands. From a farmer's perspective, when you're putting all those resources into your product and then to only get, you know, maybe 80% or 90% or, or in a bad year, you're only recovering 50%. In, in any other business world, you would shut down. I often joke about this, but sometimes when people joke about things, there's a small little bit of truth in there. And sometimes I just think maybe we need to go hungry. Cassandra Clark and her son Scott are one such family who know what it's like to be hungry. Relying on support from Ontario Works and living too far out of town to benefit from a local food bank, every month is a struggle for Cassandra to put enough food on the table. Uh, living with food insecurity on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, constant worry, constant stress. It's hard to enjoy daily activities like the park uh, because you're constantly thinking about how you're going to eat, how I'm going to feed Scott. Um, where am I going to get the money from and how am I going to survive? I have to take a cab uh, to the grocery store and back home and that costs $22. So today I will have $178 um, to do groceries after my cab rides and I'll spend $150 today and try to save $28. Basically, we're going to look through the stuff that you've just sort of purchased for, and this is for 20 days approximately? Approximately 20 days, yeah. Okay, great. Usually in a month I can only afford one brick of cheese that I try to stretch as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, cheese slices, although it's, it's um, not the best, I can make grilled cheese with it or cheese and crackers or or what have you. Produce, there isn't a lot, bananas, um, corn, but 
but they don't last very long. That's going to last maybe three days. And then Scott and I are out of produce for 18, 17 days. So, so this is all the fruit that you're going to have. That's right. Do you ever take less on your plates so that you know that there'll be more for Scott to eat? Every single night. In fact, I just made spaghetti for us two nights ago. And like I said, usually the last three days before the first is really rough on Scott and I. And uh, a friend brought me hamburger and I had pasta and sauce. And so I made spaghetti for Scott and I, but I had a tiny little pudding dish. Scott had a big plate, he's a big boy. And because there was enough left over for Scott to have for lunch the next day. So yeah, I didn't really eat that night. Um, and it's like that every month. Mm. Is it hard to be hungry when you want something to eat? Yeah. There's a lot of times I have to say no or no to an applesauce cup or no to cheese and crackers because I have the crackers but I have no cheese. And so it's emotionally exhausting when you know that you don't have the food that, that your child wants because it could be something as simple as a Pop-Tart or a taco casserole. And, and when it's not there, you, you feel like a failure. You feel like you're not doing your job as a parent. And for us, we live in the country, so there are no food banks. There are no buses to get to the food bank. And so when we're at a food, Scott and I are on our own. I don't have family, so it's a challenge. On average, our food travels over 1,500 miles to get to our grocery stores. And then another couple of kilometers after that to make it to our homes or restaurants. And during that voyage, not every tomato and bag of lettuce survives. Fresh Spoke, a new startup company in Barrie, is rethinking the order and delivery process for wholesale buyers and has become a game changer in reducing food waste and supporting local food. Download Fresh Spoke here, here. Download the Local Food Champion companion app as well. Fresh Spoke is a marketplace platform that connects local food producers with wholesale buyers and simplifies the order, payment, and delivery process for both the buyer and the seller. As a platform focused on food delivery, Fresh Spoke wanted to make sure that food rejected at a buyer's door wasn't ending up in the trash. So our concern was, you know, what do we do with this? We don't want it to lose, leave the supply chain. Uh, we, this is, in many cases, there's nothing wrong with that food. It's completely edible. And oftentimes, in circumstances, the food actually goes to waste. We don't want that to happen. The company has begun connecting with food rescue organizations to ensure that rejected food is being salvaged rather than dumped. And when we asked Marcia what usually happens to rejected food in the absence of fresh spoke, the answer was a little shocking. Unfortunately, uh, most of our research would indicate that that food doesn't, doesn't stay in the ecosystem, it gets destroyed. Local food, local food and prevent wastage. So. Peter Dougherty, owner of Alliston Feed Service, is one such retailer who will be benefiting from fresh spoke's platform to reduce his food waste. So for instance, this produce right here, you can see, it's on sale for $1.99. That produce we sell for $5. So we're selling it at a loss, and right now it's past the point. So we're gonna have to throw all this produce out. We've had problems with wastage on products because in the retail business, you're just not sure how much to buy. So this way we can order smaller quantities more frequently and uh, cut down on the wastage. I'm most excited about the idea of being able to provide insights and intelligence back to the food system, to be able to help them to plan better, to be able to grow crops that are in demand and not to have to scratch their head every spring. So uh, the environmental food uh, impacts of food waste uh, occur on two sides. The one side is the energy and the water that's wasted by growing it and then you never eat it. About 80% of fresh water in Canada is used to grow food. 80% we put on fields, we pour pesticides, we pour fertilizers, we pour energy. The, the, the amount of energy to make a cob of corn will blow your mind. Uh, and, and we spend all this energy, we waste all these chemical products, and then we never eat the food. In this in this facility, 100% the food waste come from the consumer. At Liberty North, a banquet and special event space, the challenge for reducing food waste lies not with the kitchen, but rather with the customer's preference for buffets. I think uh, a lot of the instances where people are wasting food is uh, at, at buffets, groups of, uh, groups of guys at golf tournaments and stuff like that who just take piles and piles of food and 
kind of just like, why are you taking so much food? You know, you can come back, it's a buffet. There has been many cases, um, actually quite often, when we have to throw large amounts of food. Um, a good example, that actually happened this winter a few times, when uh, we had a lunch event book and we have prepped sandwiches for 200 people, only half of the people showed up. And what do you do with the food? You know, I know for a fact that the food were still good. You know, they were only been out there for about half an hour or so. Uh, I wish I can give that to, you know, or various organizations like the Salvation Army or, or someplace. But they have policies that they can't take food. That's the issue where it, when it's left over and brought in from the buffet, it can't be reused, so that's got to go in the bin. So to throw out a whole tray of potatoes or something, it's just excessive and it's not necessary. I think it's important as, as a young chef to, to really learn about um, portion control, mainly because let's just say there's a person who's buying extra amount of potatoes and they're buying 20 extra pounds for every function. Basically, over time in the market, that 20, even though it's one place, if it happened everywhere, it's a false um, representation of what the farmers need, right? So the farmers look at their year-end crops and they're saying, oh wow, we need uh, 100,000 pounds. When in reality, they might only need to, to grow 80,000 pounds. Food waste in, the, in our industry can be reduced uh, by, uh, by better management, uh, both from the consumer side and from um, the, the hospitality side. At the end of the day, if, um, if there is leftover food, it does have to go into the bin. We can't reserve it. People work really hard in this industry to, to minimize waste, obviously for financial reasons, uh, and it's just the right thing to do. But, but waste is inevitable. It's an inevitable part of what we do uh, in the restaurant business. Due to quality assurance, freshness standards, uh, company standards, so food that, that you know, is not servable for, uh, for the regular consumer, but is not bad food, it does get tossed. And it's not just quality standards from the restaurant's perspective. The customer standard plays a big role in what gets tossed. Well, I think a lot of the food waste is created in the fast food environment just even through the exchange um, of the customers. So um, when people order food, if they have a simple little complaint about it, like if there's too many pickles on something or if the fries aren't hot enough, you know, things like that, when they come to the counter, um, they're bringing those back and we can't hand those back out to customers. So those automatically go in the garbage and a new uh, food item is created for them. So I think that would probably be one of the major areas for sure. Ah, this is entirely full. I don't know what it is. Some sort of fruit drink. Well, I smell ketchup. <laughs> Aha! Okay, hold on, I can, I'll get a couple out here. We've got french fries in this one. There's definitely points when it becomes unreasonable. You know, I can understand that people want, you know, their food to be fresh and made correctly. However, you know, something in the instance where there's too many pickles, they can be taken off. So I think within reason, you know, sometimes you, uh, you get a product back and you're kind of, you know, beside yourself because it's like, wow, like that's a perfectly good sandwich. There's nothing wrong with that. And now that has to go in the garbage and that could have been someone's food. Food not bombs, grab a plate, help yourself. Free dinner. Food Not Bombs is an international organization um, with over 30 years of turning what would have otherwise been food waste or donations into free community meals. Before a community dinner, members of the group will gather donations and leftover foods from bakeries, grocery stores, and the Berry Farmer's Market. The idealism behind it is that the government has tons and tons of money and they choose to spend it on militarization and on things that are really a detriment to the human race instead of supporting uh, all of the people in our society. We have more than enough resources to clothe and feed and house everyone on the planet and yet for some reason our governments choose not to. Being a mom of two, 
on a budget that's pretty much just $1,200 a month for two kids and then Ontario Works, which is also $1,200. And then my rent for a three bedroom, like basically apartment, uh, is $1,500 all inclusive. Uh, after your budget goes with spending on diapers and formula and uh, even the little bit of food that you can, it hardly gets you working per month, you know? So it is a struggle. It would be nice if there was a lot more government funding for this so it wasn't just donations based because right now all they have is the Salvation Army for, or the food bank for feeding people. And I've eaten at the Salvation Army and I'm telling you, it's not very good food. <laughs> definitely not nutritious, definitely just bottom of the barrel. So um, there should be a lot more money uh, for that kind of initiative because there are quite a lot of people, needy people that need food, so. They're just plain noodles, but they're really good. I made this last myself. There you go, now you gotta try it. Food Not Bombs has impacted my life in that I feel a greater connection to my community. I feel like I get to know the folks who live in my neighborhood. I get to know the farmers and I get to understand my food chain a little bit better. And, and I feel like I have a better sense of food security because I know where my meals are coming from. Food Not Bombs. So for me, it represents equality for everyone in our community to come together and play some instruments and have a good meal together. and. Yeah, doesn't matter who you are, right? At Shine Juice Bar and Cafe, wasting food is highly frowned upon. In fact, the entire restaurant strives to create zero waste. With over 16 green bins and not a garbage bin to be found, Owners Alex and Laura are certainly doing their part to reduce waste. In, in other restaurants I've worked in, the experience will blow, blow your mind how much food waste goes out and where it goes and how it just goes right into the garbage. Um, I worked at large, large resorts, I've worked in small restaurants, and the first restaurant I've ever been in was mine that has a, has a green bin in it. And it's, uh, it was something that consciously when I said well, I'm going to open a restaurant, this is what we're going to do. We can eliminate uh, the waste this way for us. Part of the health, uh, health inspector came and told us we had to put a garbage in our, our restaurant. We had to have a garbage bin. And so we went out and bought one and we found that we were basically hiding our, our recycling bins inside the garbage so that we had a garbage bin. And because we didn't, we don't use garbage. We don't have any garbage, right? So. Minimal waste is huge, right? Um, if you can make a soup out of something, if you can make, uh, for like for cauliflower, we use in three, three or four different ways. We use them as steaks or in our buffalo cauliflower sandwiches. We also use them in a little shiner, so we make little little pieces. And then we have a cauliflower bowl where you get the flowerets. So for us, it, for us, we can reuse uh, quite a bit of things, right? With mouth-watering food and an environmental conscience, it's no wonder the place was packed for lunch even on a Tuesday. For regular Cindy, going to Shine is a family affair. My grandkids come here, my daughter comes here, uh, everybody I know that I tell that, you know, you need to go check this place out. They have the patio now. Um, it's just a great atmosphere. I'm hooked on the Shine and Caesar salad. <laughs> Everything's recyclable in here and when you see all the compost bins lined up, it's just phenomenal. Like, to have a company that takes care of the environment as well, it's really important. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a, it's an effort for sure, right? But uh, it's everyday life now. We've been doing it for, for, well, for two years. We've been taking compost to the dump a couple times a week, if not one, one day a week for sure. Yeah, there is, there is a, a, definitely an effort involved. In it. Hey, Christine. So the food waste in your home, about half of it is actual food scraps. Peelings, stuff off the plate, you know, is we need to make it into compost again, get it back into the soil. About 50% of it is good food. You bought too much of it, and, and you, basically you bought too much of it, and you didn't use it quick enough. That, that, that's the big problem. I think we waste a lot more at home. We'll cook too much one night, and then we'll don't want the leftovers the next night, and go on to something else and throw it out, at least at our house. And for you, how much of your food in your fridge usually ends up in the waste basket or the green box? I would say about 20%. All right, so dollar value, I would probably say about $20. Do you waste any food? No. So what happens if you don't finish your dinner? You don't get any dessert. 
Patrick Vu considers his family to be a relatively food conscious one. But living in a household of seven with four hungry daughters, a wife and mother-in-law can make it difficult for the family to always be on top of their food waste. Oftentimes I find it's um, things like berries. Uh, so, you know, if we're, we're purchasing strawberries, raspberries, you know, that, that somehow we think that we're going to go through them faster than we do. Uh, and as, uh, as much as, uh, and I will, uh, I'm the kind of person like, I'll, I'll look at a, uh, you know, a container of berries and think, oh, just this one's fuzzy. So uh, I, I don't think that we often f discover things in the back of the fridge that we're like, hmm, how long has that been in there? Okay, well, uh, if we can open the fridge up. You bet. Right that. Yep. Okay, great. That is so this is, oh, I think this is, um, was this the cauliflower soup? Possibly. <laughs> I know that we did have some leftover cauliflower soup. That's, uh, now this has possibly gone bad. I suspect that, you know, if I, if I did more sort of searching on a regular basis or, uh, or asking more questions, that I might be surprised at what more I could be doing. Oh, or or even how I could be better uh, in terms of purchasing. The good food that's being wasted in the county is um, about 99 kilograms per household per year that's actually being thrown away. That's about 59% of the food that's actually um, showing up in the green bin program and in the garbage. So I'm going to conduct a little experiment to see what's actually hiding in our waste. Okay, this is our green bin with our compost for the week. I visited residents from around the Barrie area and began digging through their compost bins with their permission, of course, to see just what kind of waste I could find on an average week. And what about this? That's a great question. I have no idea why that is in there. That looks like it might have been in somebody's lunch and didn't get eaten, and it probably stayed in their lunch for a, a few days, and yeah. they decided there's no way they're gonna eat it. Oh! Oh, we got mashed potatoes! A whole bunch! Okay, I'll just get it with my hands. Oh, God, <laughs> keep going. There's nuts in there, too, that actually still look good. We can totally eat these for lunch. Ah, it's a good thing I don't mind fuzz. <laughs> Away we go! <laughs> so basically, we're gonna try and make a full meal, sort of fill up a plate and potentially a bowl, and then uh, see what we're gonna present tomorrow at the farmer's market. Okay, so we're at the farmer's market with our healthy, well-balanced meal from the compost bins, and we're gonna see what people think about it. Okay, so I've made uh, sort of a healthy, well-balanced meal here, and I want to get your opinion as to whether you think it's, you know, nutritious and whether or not you would eat it. Yeah, I would eat it. Okay, so what would you say if I told you that all of this food came from people's compost bins in Barrie? Oh, you're kidding. So all of this food came from people's compost bins in Barrie. Yeah, that's crazy. All of this food came from Barry Citizens compost bins. So all of this food came out of people's compost bins in Barry. What? Well, if it's still nutritionist, I, I don't mind. Well, what, what's the point? What's the point? Yeah. What we're trying to make here is to talk about you know, I think that we need to learn how to use our leftovers better and how to, how to value our food more because we're throwing out so much perfectly good food. After the experiment, we showed Cassandra a picture of the meal to get her thoughts on the waste. Wow. I'd say that Scott and I wish we could have that on a daily basis. And it looks really good and stuff that we can't have all the time. Nuts are too expensive um, to have that fancy deli meat and a nice bun, no, not happening. And that we get maybe the first week or two of the month, uh, nice fresh greens and fruits. But after the first week or two of the month, Scott and I don't really, this is not an option for us, just way too much money. I'm not sure what that is, but um, 
It's sweet potato. Oh, okay. Another thing, yeah, we can't afford it because it costs more than just a regular bag of potatoes. That looks very nutritious. Yes. I wish we could have that. Yeah. To know that people can afford to throw that away and yet there's people at food banks and hungry every single day wishing that they could have any of those items just one yeah. let alone the whole thing if nothing else this experiment made me realize just how much excess we have in our community we are so inundated by convenient food options that the act of tossing something out has become no more significant than brushing our teeth meanwhile just up the street George and his son Jeremy rejoice over receiving the simplest of food items, like a loaf of bread from the Berry Food Bank. Do you want white or brown bread? Uh, brown, please. And we also have lettuce today. Ah, uh, yes. There you go, french fries. Yes. Would you like both hot dogs and ground beef? Yes. Uh, on, on my budget, uh, I say uh, I have a budget this small, right. where most people have, you know, about that big. So I have to flat out everything so that it, there's money at the end of the month kind of thing as I go through because otherwise I, I just can't do it. I, I f truly f feel that without the food bank, we would be having less food on our table to eat and his nutrients values that he needs at his age would not be met at all. I do not think so. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, make uh, tuna sandwiches. Because he has severe disabilities, he's have, uh, sensitivity uh, for taste and uh, he has the ability to want to ch try something new but it ends up being uh, if it's spicier he doesn't want to eat it anymore so we have I have to really watch what I eat which tends to be very bland but I put a little bit <laughs> of spice there <laughs> he yeah. doesn't realize that so thank goodness we have bread though <laughs> Are you ever hungry? Yes, that has happened. Uh, not knowing that uh, you have enough m food in to th when you get to these points that uh, you don't have enough food on the table or the fridge, I should say, or the cupboard. You have, to, and that's where I'm saying that I have to stretch these uh, uh, foods that we take in to last longer per for the weeks because there are some times when you don't think you're gonna have enough at the end. You just don't. Thank you, Dad. You're welcome. It, I don't feel ashamed. I just I feel that life is hard as it is. So, but you cannot rely on everybody else. You have to rely on yourself, and that's a huge step in itself. I'd love to see a day where there's you know, no zero waste and maybe there will be one day. We have a lot of work to do and we have a lot of awareness to build. Incentive on the operator's side will help a great deal. Stop looking for perfection. Is it something like a simple fix or is it something that you can live with because like is it really worth wasting? Because I don't think we're going to change people's mindset about food waste anytime soon. It's not an easy fix. On our part, wasting food comes from lots of little missteps. A moment of forgetfulness, a minute of indulgence, a brief instance of laziness. But maybe, if we can start by changing just one of those habits, we can begin to make the shift value our food more and potentially right our wrongs. Or at the very least, save that cabbage that's about to sprout mold in the crisper. Finally, finally, finally. All right. Food is meant to be enjoyed, savored, eaten, not tossed.